So let's start putting together everything. I am going to use the ends of a cane that I had laying around. You can use pretty much anything, even a um, piece of regular clay in a color that would match the other ones or would be very slightly uh, different. If you see here, I'm using a bluestone and an ecru. And only the blue stone is a little bit different, but it still matches uh, the hues that are barely noticeable in that uh, mica and acrylic effect that I used. So uh, on a very thin, thin sheet, a thin setting sheet of uh, scrap polymer clay, I placed a line and then uh, I cut my uh, piece of uh, special effects mica powders and acrylic paints in two and then I am uh, cutting the shape, a preliminary shape and then I will place it on both sides of the line that I created with slices of uh, cane and make sure that at this point you do not um, trap any air bubbles and then of course uh, even it out flatten it and then cut the final shape of your uh, focal bead i initially had designed this to be just a pendant but then i said why not go ahead and uh, show you a full uh, wearable art project when you create beads uh, that would match the pendant I'm going to uh, bake on a um, domed uh, base, it's not very domed, so I will only have a little bit of a, a 3D um, effect. Then uh, I take that sheet of combined uh, Mokumegane and I will um, wrap it around a sausage of scrap clay that I will use as a frame pretty much something kind of like between a bezel and the, and the frame if you want around the uh, focal uh, piece and uh, of course I measured first to make sure that my uh, little sausage cylinder is about the size of the side of the pendant and I will do the same for the top and then uh, make sure that you blend well the seam uh, roll it a little bit so it would be well blended and then cut it in two lengthwise it will be a little bit tricky but uh, you can do it if you don't do a very good cut, it's very simple, just do another sausage and keep cutting. Then I place some texture on a black sheet of uh, the th third thinnest setting. No, it was the fourth, sorry. And then I am cutting it about uh, a third of an inch from the edge for now. This is the preliminary. Uh, trim and then I place it on the I lift it on the edges of the focal pendant Then the back that's on top. I am going to flatten it to eliminate the texture because that is where I'm going to place my bale and I'll also place on the bale another piece of the uh, Mokumegane of that uh, mixed livers that I uh, prepared in uh, the first part of the tutorial and then I will cut along so that would be uh, the bale and then again about a quarter of, the, of an inch from the top of the um, uh, focal piece. And be very careful when you cut there because that's going to be um, very visible. And then once I do that, I place a little bit of bacon bond around the along the edges of the focal piece, and then I flatten the um, uh, backing, bring it up, and flatten it against the edges. 
then I will be placing a piece of copper tubing and I will place a link both in the description and in the cards uh, on my little tips and tricks tutorial showing you how you can get one of those uh, uh, copper tubing uh, to make bales out of it and then I am doing the fine trimming on that edge that I have created by bringing the backing um, up on the edges of the piece uh, and here be very very careful and do a very nice and neat trimming after which I am flattening with my paintbrush the edge to eliminate the texture and make a nice and uh, smooth edge and now it's time to place the bale I'm first measuring to make sure that it won't cover too much of the front uh, focal piece and yeah it helps when you remove the lid before trying to squeeze anything out of a bottle generally speaking most of the time <laughs> and then I am placing the uh, piece of copper tubing and it's good that they are already curved because they are in a coil so you don't have to worry much about uh, shaping it and after I'm placing it I'm going to um, carve the edges so they would be uh, nicely looking not uh, squarish and uh, you know um, looking unkempt because even if the piece is of a very unorthodox shape uh, it still has to look pretty and uh, now I'm ready to place that frame bezel however you want to call it I'm going to cut in a diagonal uh, so I can um, blend them seamlessly at the bottom and at the corners and I am placing some bacon bond on the edge uh, you can place uh, liquid clay of course uh, just make sure that you don't uh, bring too much inside because you don't want to cover the acrylic paint with that uh, you can use a paintbrush if you're not very sure about your fingers working very well for this and then I'm placing that uh, half a uh, wrapped sausage and cutting again in a diagonal at the corners and then I will be placing also the top parts in the same way and then just check to make sure that it is well uh, aligned with the edge and well blended at the corner seams and then you can place some mica powder on the back and because I want to imitate all the colors that are on the Mokumegane um, I'm going to the same as I did before just uh, place some dabs of various colors that uh, afterwards I will blend and you see I chose some concentric circles for the texture because uh, I think that would match uh, nicely the front so once I'm placing my uh, mica powder colors and you don't have to place several colors you can place just one because it all depends on the colors that you have chosen for the front of your piece and then I'm using the paintbrush to just uh, blend everything and then I'm taking another piece of black clay uh, on the thinner setting and I'm just using whatever is left on the paintbrush from the mica powders and I'm going to cut two exceptionally thin uh, strips uh, actually thinner than one millimeter that um, I'm not really going to use anything on because I'm going to apply uh, a liquid clay on the front so that will seal them in place so all I need to do is to just place them properly and make sure that they are um, well attached for the baking because they will not fall once I place, uh, once I uh, apply the liquid uh, Kato poly clay. So make sure that you uh, place it properly and then uh, you're pretty much ready for the second bake. 
Now, the idea on this is that I wanted to use some uh, colors and effects that would be between uh, metallic and brocade. So, uh, for creating some beads, I'm going to take another piece of scrap clay on the thickest setting, and I'm using um, a Royal Ruby uh, Espresso and Emperor's Gold, all three metallics. And you see, I'm first dabbing some on the piece of clay, and then I will just place them all over. This is called marbling with acrylic. I'm just uh, making sure that I have these colors all over the place, after which I will be uh, gently, um, not really mixing them, but kind of smudging them one into the other. So it would create a marbling effect because after this uh, I will let it dry properly and then when gone through the pasta machine it will do again that uh, crackle that very fine crackle that um, will allow me to create some beads that will match uh, very nicely the um, background of the focal piece Now you will have, at this point, you will have in some spots too much acrylic paint and uh, you can uh, dab it with a little bit of water to make sure that you have a good coverage of the clay and it also, it's very important what you choose as a background. I uh, chose the same scrap clay that I used for the focal piece. And you see, I am lifting all the excess acrylic paint and I'm going to actually, wherever I have a little bit too much, I'm going to dab a little bit more water. Uh, also, if I lifted and uncovered the clay so that I can have a thin coat of acrylic left on the clay. I, I don't have, won't have any kind of thick acrylic paint left because it causes different kind of effects and it can also bubble when baked. So once I do that, um, all I have to do is to let it fully and completely dry. And I would suggest you to uh, leave it for at least an hour because there's a difference between uh, dry at the touch and fully dry. But this is how it looks. And you can see it's a beautiful, beautiful effect. And this is one of the effects that you can use to create faux leather. But I'll show you that in another tutorial. Then I got some more scrap clay and I created some cubes. And that I'm going to wrap in uh, slices of that mokumegane. And you see I wrap three parts and then I go around and I wrap the other three parts in a line so I don't have to create a square for the top and a square for the bottom. And once I do that, I start pinching opposite corners of that cube, so I create an elongated shape. And I'm actually pressing with my fingers so each of the faces of this shape will be concave and the edges will be a little bit sharp. Make sure that you um, gently smudge over um, wherever you had the edges of the pieces you covered with. So they would be nicely smoothened and you won't be able to, to see your beads will be seamless. And then you can um, gently twist those um, ridges to create a little bit more effect. I'm first piercing the beads with a needle tool and then I will be using a uh, toothpick because I intend to use a leather cord suede for this so I will need a bigger hole in the beads. And once you've placed your um, toothpick, gently um, redo the edges because your bead might get a little bit more distorted. 
then out of uh, scrap clay I'm creating again a um, rectangular shape that I'm cutting in two so I would have two flat rectangular beads that I am wrapping in that marbled clay around through the thinnest setting and they will look pretty much like toffees if you want but this is the look that uh, the beads should have and then I will be using the handle of my paintbrush to, again for the for blending the seams in this case the seams will not blend that uh, perfectly but it's fine because it's a, a look that you want to achieve and once I do that I will be uh, piercing holes with the toothpick always go on one side then turn the bead around and go on the other side until the holes meet in the middle so you don't go haywire and come out on a wrong spot on the other side of the bead and then once I'm sure that my uh, bead hole is right I'm going to twist these beads and I'm going to twist them in different directions so they would be symmetrical when placed on the necklace after which I have to bake them now I have everything baked you see I placed some uh, liquid polyclay not on the strip in the middle the beads are also uh, with liquid uh, Kato polyclay then um, I am going to use the suede leather cord, some uh, wooden beads and these are some beads that I had created before with the, using the cane that I placed in the middle a toggle and initially I wanted to do the ends with the um, wire but then I went with the clamp, uh, with clamps, leather clamps now careful when you use this with leather or anything else you need to file that inside edge a little bit otherwise in time it will cut your cord it's fine if you use chain but if you use anything that can be cut by a sharp edge make sure that you file the inner edge of that bale so now all I do is to uh, string my beads in the order that I had envisioned And I chose those uh, wooden beads because the colors uh, are very, very suitable. The colors and the finish are very, very suitable for uh, the other matching the other pieces. And the general effect was something that, again, I said I wanted to be between metallic and uh, brocade, but look at the same time a little bit tri tribal, but still very modern. So I'm placing some Loctite glue on the uh, suede cord and then I'm placing the clamp bead, the clamp, the clamp, not the clamp bead. And uh, I will be uh, pressing it flat with the pliers. So the suede will be very secure. And place the glue on the back of the clamp not on the front because if you put it on the front you'll get a lot of glue on your pliers after which I am attaching the I cut the excess uh, leather and I'm attaching the toggle clasp uh, to the clamp with a double jump ring because it's a relatively heavy necklace so I don't want to trust a simple jump ring and there we go here's my wearable art piece you can see how the beads were all created for the central focal piece and i actually made uh, a full set i made some earrings and i also made a cuff 
and I will show you the tutorial about the earrings. But this is it, your wearable art project number one. Happy claying!